Thank you so much for coming to my talk about advertising. Um, <laughs> it's a very exciting topic for me and a very new topic for me. So, um, and I know it says sponsored content up there, but there's actually no sponsored content in this talk whatsoever. That's probably the only advertising talk you'll ever go to where there is absolutely no sponsored content. Um, so this is a little bit of an agenda of what we're going to talk about today. And this is a picture of what I thought advertisers did when I started out one year ago doing advertising. OK, so this is me. Uh, my name is Katie Steggs. Some of you might know me from Lumi Consulting, uh, which was founded in 2012 and has been run by myself and Lauren Clinic, who's sitting up the front here for the last seven years. So we haven't uh, announced publicly yet but we're actually working on a big new project, something totally different from what we've been doing. Um, and so for the last year, I have actually been doing a completely different role from my former role as the marketing uh, director at Lumi Consulting. In fact, I have been looking after soft launches, which is um, a new area for me. I've never worked in an advertising company or anything like that. I have. Um, learned everything from scratch. So this talk is going to be about how did I go from knowing absolutely nothing about advertising to being able to run uh, user acquisition campaigns and ads for games. Now, this is going to be quite specific to my experience, but a lot of the, um, a lot of the key points will be ap applicable to advertising no matter whether you're doing it for a soft launch or if you're doing it for a premium title although there is um, significant differences in how you do those. This is based on my experience, so I'm going to be focusing on soft launch ads and how I managed to do that. Um, I'm going to talk about the mistakes that I made, the successes that I've had, and hopefully pass on to you some key takeaways so that you don't make the same mistakes. <laughs> um, so there's me. I'm about to transform. Okay, so at the start of this year, um, I was told it was going to be up to me to get people in this game. That was totally my responsibility. You know, it's not uh, organic. It's not um, people aren't just going to come in. This is your job. Your job is to get people in this game so that we can analyze player behavior within the game and optimize the game to make it better. Um, so this is a very terrifying thought to me because... As I mentioned, I had never done this before and I had zero clue where to begin. So I was panicking. When I started out, I really did not know where to begin. So this is the game that I've been working on for the last year. It's called Critter Clash. It is a battle in the jungle featuring the whole animal kingdom. It's kind of a PvP um, treetop game where you can build a little... A uh, team of animals, and the idea is that you want to knock the other team's animals out of the tree first, and they all have different abilities and different specialties. Each animal is its own thing. So my job was going to be to create all of the ads and manage the user acquisition budget and UA management for the entire soft launch period. So what is a soft launch? A soft launch is when you release a product to a limited region in order to learn and iterate on your game. So essentially, it's a quiet release that allows you to get players in the game and change your game so that it's essentially better, more what the players like, and um, improves vital metrics if you're going to have a commercially successful game. And I'm not making any, um, any claims here. This is absolutely a commercial product game. So normally, it's done for free-to-play games before global release, and it can go from three months to a whole year, depending on the size of your team and the budget that you have. Usually it's used to funnel players into your game uh, so that you can yeah, test and optimise what you're actually doing in there. So at the beginning of the year, I had one month to prepare uh, to start doing user acquisition, which is a very terrifying timeline. If you know anything about ads, you'll know that it's extremely complicated to try and manage your own ads. Uh, so where do I even start? And um, it was just me. I'm the only person on this team that is doing the ads. <laughs> and a lot of larger companies will have whole teams. So if there's anyone out here who is thinking, you know, I'd really like to be able to advertise for my game, but I'm not in a big company, then this is kind of for you because hopefully um, I'll be able to teach you some of the things that I did to, to do this by myself. Um, 
So the first thing I had to figure out, like right from scratch, is what am I trying to achieve? So for us, we're about to launch a three-month soft-like launch cycle. So my goals for the first month were figure out who the audience for this game is, figure out how Facebook advertising even works, decide what platforms to run my ads on, figure out what my competitors are doing, and determine what format of ad works best for our potential audience. And these are all pre-soft launch questions that I had one month to figure out. Okay, so um, where to start? Research. First of all, we already knew where we were going to soft launch. That was in Australia. Um, I wouldn't recommend you do that if you're going to do a soft launch anywhere. Australia has a very small population, um, which causes volume and reach issues down the line. But we had already decided this, so that's what we had to stick with. But if you haven't decided your soft launch region yet, um, I can really recommend using uh, Google Trends to discover some hidden gems. One tip that I like to use is searching the game genre. Um, so it can, you can see at the top of the slide there, I've written farming games and I've searched uh, globally and it comes up with the Netherlands as the key region that is searching for farming games. So if you're making a farming game, the Netherlands could be a really excellent region for you to soft launch in because you can see that those people there are really searching. And fortunately, I went and cross-checked that with this... Um, Chart Boost CPI global charts, and it looks like the Netherlands are actually a really great place to soft launch. Some other things you might want to think about are traffic quality when you're launching your game. So, like, how, how good are these users? Are they coming into my game and are they leaving straight away? Are they staying? Are they actually playing different levels in different modes? Um, the market affinity, how similar are the players in my region, my chosen soft launch region, to the eventual primary target market, the, like for example the US if you're going to launch there. And then of course with your budget, what is the CPI and cost of acquisition in that region? Do you actually um, have the amount of cash that you need to do soft launch in that region or maybe you might choose to sacrifice the quality or the market affinity to go for something that's a little bit lower cost but maybe doesn't have the same level of um, you know, quality that you're really looking for here. But that's still fine too. Um, so the next thing I needed to do was figure out my competitors. Um, I was essentially starting to ask questions about who my players were going to be. And one of the best ways that I could do that was looking at the closest competitor titles to our game. Um, I've just used the exa example of Angry Boots here because it's also a slingshot type game where you have to knock things down, although it wasn't PvP. And I did look at a lot of other titles. Um, but yeah, looking on the App Store is like the first place that I'd always go. Just to searching one of the key terms that will probably be relevant for my game will bring up games that are likely to be my competitors. Um, so once I know the competitors in the market, I can also start figuring out um, what they're doing to advertise their game because that's a great way to research how are other people selling these types of games. Um, and I... Additionally, was testing, and this is a little bit before advertising, but I thought I'd mention it, is the uh, assets for our game. So the store copy and the things like the name of our game, the icon, and one of the great tools that you can use for this is uh, Google Consumer Surveys. It's really cheap. If you don't have a, a large budget, you can get about 500 responses for about $50, and it's a really quick and easy way to test your assumptions about your game very budget. So I recommend using that um, and you all probably already know about store experiments and things like that to test your icon. Um, and all of this stuff is going to lead into um, testing elements before trying to hit our goal of, of getting installs in our game. Um, this is another great way to research. So you can, if you've already got your title on the, on the store, I just went and stalked and found similar titles, looked at those. Um, and then I, once I knew what they were, I could also search for them on Ad Expresso's ad examples. If you haven't heard of that, it's an amazing semi-free tool um, that lets you see and spy on what other people's ads are. So, for example, if I type in um, Epic or if I type in Fortnite, as you can see in the example on there, I can see what ads Fortnite are running at this point in time, which is extremely useful if you've never done advertising before and you're thinking, well, how do people even make ads? What do they write in? And the added advantage is that much more, uh, much larger companies are spending a lot more time and a lot more research on their ads, and you can actually glean a heap about what kind of advertisements are effective just by looking at what they're putting out there because they have a much bigger budget than you and they've probably tested a lot more than you. 
Um, this is a new thing. This is really exciting for me. You can actually now go to a Facebook page um, and see what ads they're running live at the moment. So if you go to the Facebook page of Angry Birds, you can see that there is the info and ads section there that is actually just um, showing you what ads are live. Like, that's extremely valuable because you can then look at it and see, like, how your competitors are marketing their product, which is very useful when you're trying to differentiate yourself. This is another tool that I used for research. So it's, if you haven't seen it, it's in uh, Facebook's business manager section. Um, it's called the audience insights tool or audiences tool. And you can essentially research who you think your uh, players are gonna be and your competitors again. So you have all of these amazing targeting op options that you can see on the left-hand side of the screen there. Goes all the way from location, down to gender, whether they have kids or not, what their interests are. And it's really fascinating because you can look into what your players are likely to be interested in before you even design your ads and your creative. So on the right, once I've drilled down to fans of Angry Birds, I can then look at what they're likely to enjoy. So for example, if I look down this list here, I can see that Fail Army and you know, Rockstar Games, Steve-O, 8-Ball Paul, these are all things that my audience is probably going to like. So I can glean some information from that. I can go, okay, well, it looks like they like sort of action, fast-paced sort of stuff, like fun, punchy, exciting. And I can use that when it eventually comes to creating my ads. Um, so once I'd done a little bit of this research, we started to create um, target personas. And target personas are simply made up uh, profiles of people who look like what you think your users are going to be. And this is a step before you start running experiments for your ads, um, which will help you determine, okay, of these profiles that we think are the players for our games, um, you know, which one is the most likely, which is the core audience, essentially. And that's very important because your core audience are your most valuable audience, they're the audience that are going to be your advocates, and the audience that is going to be the best quality for soft launch um, traffic in your game. Um, so, uh, what I was going to do after this is um, create some experiments based on, um, on that research. And I set up in Facebook audiences these four profiles. So I was able to craft them in the audience insights tools before and save them as a new audience and later use them to set up my experimental ads. Um, I, in retrospect, as a note now, I probably wouldn't recommend you do this, um, and I'll go a bit further into why that is later, but essentially machine learning in these platforms is incredibly sophisticated now, and if I had my time again, what I would have done is created no demographics and run an ad and seen in the Facebook demographics tool who the people were that were actually clicking on it, just letting them optimise that targeting um, rather than trying to manually do it myself. Okay, so I've got where to soft launch Australia. I know who my competitors are. Angry Birds, Plagendary titles, Slingshot titles. And I know that my players are around 30, 60, female to male. And now, what about my creatives? So I actually had to create my ads as well. Um, and they are really, really important. They're the holy grail. If you're going to focus on anything with your advertising, it's absolutely going to be your creatives. You can make them as fun or as silly as you like. But as long as you test them, because... Um, Often, the ones that are successful are not the ones that you might think. So creatives are the ads that you actually see. If you're scrolling through your Facebook feed or you're searching on Google or you're looking at YouTube, the creative is the ad that you actually watch. Um, and if you're a low-budget um, studio like we are, you're probably going to make these in-house. And these are some tools that I use to make my ads. So the top left one is called Bluestacks. It's a really great mobile emulator. I believe it can do other types of games as well, but it's awesome because it runs on my PC, which means I can do screen capture with OBS Studio, which is also free, um, to capture that gameplay footage and very easily import it into something like Premiere or iMovie to cut together my trailers. Um, so if you, if you are able to do your own ed editing, you can also save a lot of money this way. Um, it does take time though, and it's important that you make, uh, you make allowances for that in your planning schedule. Um, and these are the three kind of um, formats that I would suggest that you focus on if you are doing 
Um, if you are a small team and you have you know, a limited budget, I would just do the three, these three ad types. So you've got your portrait, your uh, square, and your nine by 16, which is 2018's best performing ad style, which is the vertical video. Um, and some must-haves to um, put in your ads as well, of course, I'm not going to uh, go into this in detail because there's heaps of information out there about it, but a really clear call to action, not too much information, definitely not too much text, and also make sure that you have your YouTube account set up because a lot of the ad platforms that you self-manage use YouTube links, um, so that's just a preparation step as well before you actually launch. Um, so with your creatives, start with action. The first three seconds are the most important. Um, you can see here an example of just that impact shot showing what the gameplay is about is really, really simple, really effective, um, and should be in the first three seconds, especially if you're advertising on YouTube because that's the unskippable part. Um, and anything beyond that is kind of like, hmm, you know, doesn't... Um, doesn't really get seen as often. And it's also important for retargeting because when you, down the line, you've showed your ads to enough people with an awareness campaign, you might wanna go back and retarget people who have already viewed your ads. Um, and those are the people that have watched the first three seconds of your ad. So again, it's really, really critical. Something else that I consistently forgot to do when I was first starting out is check how much text was in my images. Facebook actually deprioritizes images with a lot of text in them, so it's important that you don't clutter up any ads with text because it will, um, it will impact your delivery. Um, when you're running experiments as well, it's really great to test your end cards, test your calls to action, your duration, language, and your colors. And do not do that all at once, <laughs> because you will not know uh, what difference uh, is being made. It looks like my next slide is maybe like loading here, so I might have to just check my Wi-Fi hotspot for a second. Sorry. Hello. <laughs> um, good. Yes, this is what me, that's me when I was figuring out my ads, just loading blank screen. Cool, all right, I'm gonna skip that one. Um, all right, here's an example of a really budget made video. Um, it's the original Angry Birds trailer. It's really simply made doing exactly what I did, which is capturing gameplay on a screen capture tool and then cutting together static images and gameplay. So here it is. Real basic, but effective. So you get the idea. Now, here is one, if I can actually get this one to load as well, that I made exactly the same way, just cutting together footage that I captured on my computer and putting it into Premiere. on my iPhone, like super cheap. It doesn't need to be really, really high quality to be effective, but it does help. So if you do have the resources, use proper equipment. But if you don't, that's totally fine and it will still work. Oh, you want to watch again? Oh, that's so nice of you. Thank you. I did a great job, didn't I? <laughs> okay, so creatives have a shelf life. They really only last around two weeks if, you're, if you have them live. So you really need to make sure that you are consistently churning out more and more ads, which is very, very time consuming, as I mentioned. So it's great to have a few ideas in your back pocket, a few creative ways that you can refresh those ads and make sure that you're actually looking at what is the best 
um, performing ones and fixing the best and, uh, sorry, fixing, using the worst, use, what am I saying? <laughs> Fix the worst and use the best. Um, and make sure you do test them with Google consumer surveys or with Facebook experiments. And the length that I found to be the most effective for any ads, doesn't matter if it's free to play or any type, is 22 to 27 seconds, which is backed up by a Unity study as well. And if you have no budget and no skills or no time, you can always look somewhere like Fiverr or Upwork. They do really good, really budget, pretty good quality editing, and the turnaround time is around two weeks. So I recommend looking there if you don't have the time. Okay, so we've got, we've got our creatives. Now what about the platforms? This seems like a huge beast because it is. If you're a small team like me, you're probably only gonna be able to use one, two, three of these platforms simply from a time perspective. However, if you're a large company, you will be testing all of these, the things that come out all the time, the Snapchats, the Twitters, the LinkedIn's, you'll be doing all of these things. Um, I don't recommend doing that if you're a single person because you will not have time. So what I did was I researched to find out what was the best performing platform in terms of user acquisition for installs and unanimously the internet said Facebook. So I was pretty, pretty confident that Facebook was the way to go. Um, before you can use Facebook advertising, uh, you need to set up your business manager um, and, and connect your accounts. So that does take a little bit of setup, so don't do it on the same day as you're actually going to start running your experiments or your ads because it takes a bit of time. Just a small note there. Okay, so finally, time for some experiments. I am ready, I've got my ads ready, I've got my target personas, and I'm going to have a look at my ads. So what are experiments? Experiments are tests of your copy and creative. They're kind of like low budget campaigns that you do before your campaigns to figure out what's the best performing, what's you know, gonna get the best reaction, best uh, results before you set up your actual campaigns, which might be um, you know, install campaigns or they might be retro awareness campaigns, they might be click throughs. So if it's a, a Steam game or something like that, then you need to test how well these creatives are performing. And essentially they'll become your first data point, the thing that you're gonna to use to iterate every other set of ads that you have now. So the first thing I did was I tested the four personas. Um, I ran the same copy and the same image to all four of those persona personas. The only thing that was different was the targets. And we did get a result. Ty was the front runner there with 21 results, but the cost per result was really high and it wasn't, we weren't really getting the right click-through rate there. Um, as you can see, we got a result of $8 here for the, um, the Lucy persona, which is just ridiculous. So obviously something in the creatives there is just not working, not, you know, not relevant to the audience and they're just, they're not taking what I'm given. So um, then I thought, okay, maybe it's the poorly formatted video. I had not um, created my own videos at this point because it was the experiment stage. I didn't have the resource to do it, but I did have the trailer of the game, which I was just using as a video ad. Um, so it's important to make specific ads and not just use your trailers for these uh, kind of experiments. So I ran it again, um, the same copy, same images, but this time with a static image as well as a video. And that changed the result again. So the winner was Mel. Does Mel just like static images more? Well, how do we test that? Um, and I did run a bunch of other experiments um, in the same way, testing and, and iterating, asking these questions, and then creating very specific campaigns to answer those questions, which unfortunately I don't have a heap of time to go into the specifics of what I did to do that. Um, but um, essentially what it was coming up with was these two outcomes, which was Ty seemed to be liking this action and Mel seemed to be liking this collection slash um, you know, sort of portraits of all of the animals things. So I thought, you know, what if we just take out gender? What if we take out demographics? Um, maybe this isn't the way to target users. Um, instead, I had been looking at um, Nick Yee's uh, Game of Motivation model, which if you haven't heard of it, you should look it up, it's amazing. Um, and this segments player types based on player behavior. So it looks at action uh, type players, social mastery, and also creative and one other category that I can't remember. But these are the four ones that were gonna be relevant to our audience. So I thought, okay, instead of uh, segmenting based on this gender and all of these interests and everything that I've been doing, maybe I'll just try not segmenting at all and instead just serving different creative types. Um, so I made these four things that essentially um, appealed to the specific um, 
interests of each of these categories. So you can see that action likes destruction and excitement, social players like competition and community, mastery players like challenge and strategy, and achievement players like completion and power. So each of these four images uh, is based on one of those principles. So I want to ask you which one you think won. So um, we've got a few seconds to have a look at it, mastery, action, achievement, social. And I'll just ask you to raise your hand if you think the one that I say has won. Okay, so who thinks that mastery won? Who thinks that action won? Yeah, it's a good one, right? Who thinks that achievement won? Uh -huh. And who thinks that social won? Wow, yeah, I thought the same. I was wrong. It was the mastery one, which I don't think is the best image, okay? So I was like really thrown by that, but I think it's because it has less text and it's more clear what's happening and there's an action there. So, these are, these are the results. As you can see, the mastery player ran away. Now, it look, if you look on the right-hand side, you can see that the cost per result is the same as for the action player, but that the delivery of the mastery ad was much better, meaning that you should really optimise and iterate on that particular, um, that particular creative because that's the one that's getting the most um, delivery, and that's important when you're running your ads. Um, but apart from that, everything else was... Um, yeah, essentially the same, same copy, everything except the images, and same target. Oh no, okay, it has been a month. It's time for you to get a thousand people in the game immediately. You don't have time for any more experiments. So, <laughs> panicking, 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 panicking. Um, oh God, okay, what am I going to do? Um, first of all, I don't have a budget yet, so how am I going to do that? Um, well, the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to use the results of my experiments to kind of model out what I think it's going to cost me. I have a very clear goal. I need a thousand people in this game in one day. Those are my goals. They're my, they're my, they're my KPIs, if you will. So I know that that's what my ad needs to do. And I know that they need to install the game, so I know I'm going to run an install ad. Um, and your budget, what are you doing? You're essentially uh, spending money to get data, especially if you're in soft launch. And even if you're not in soft launch, you're finding out what people like and um, finding out how players are moving through your game or whether they're installing your game, downloading your game, buying your game, whatever it is. So what is this budget about? You can spend $2,000, you can spend $100,000. It depends on the team size. It depends totally on your project. Um, and once you know your data requirements, um, I would recommend running a two-week two experiment with a budget of at least $2,000. This will get you enough information so that you can actually start effectively planning a budget. And generally, you can predict what results you should get in terms of cost as long as you don't dramatically change any of those variables. For example, if your target CPI is $1.91 and you know that over two weeks you need 500 new users, it's safe-ish to say that you'll be able to spend around $1,000 to achieve that. Problems come when you start to scale your budget, decrease or change your timeline, and this can significantly impact install cost, volume, reach, and delivery of your ads. It used to be very popular to do burst campaigns, but now, um, in my experience, it's extremely difficult to predict those results, and you're about to see why. Um, so, as I mentioned, you can use your experiments to estimate your costs. Um, this is just the way that I do it. It's very rough. I wouldn't rely on it, but it will give you a sort of ballpark figure. And if you want to compare that to something, you can look at something like Chartboost um, that has a free uh, CPI Insights tool by country, and you can select the genre and the country um, where you are soft launch. So, I have Australia, I have the action um, category, the puzzle category, the strategy uh, category just to see, like, am I, am I in the ballpark of what's going to happen? Where should I actually be sitting? Okay, so whew, it's been a month. <laughs> I've done all the experiments. I've got my budget ready. I've got my creatives ready. And I know my goal. And I need a 1,000 users in this game today. So we're we ready to hit go. Here we go. Okay. Ooh, I'm very nervous. <laughs> okay, fuck! <laughs> it didn't work. Um, my CPIs shot up 14 times my experimental campaigns. My volume was significantly impacted. My ads were not even delivering. This is through Facebook, okay? I am seriously panicking right now. <laughs> my team is relying on me. I have like 20 users in this game. And I'm panicking and I turned it off because I'm like, okay, our budget's going to get eaten alive if I leave this running. So... <laughs> What went wrong? Well, here's some of the things that I did wrong. There is no funnel in operation. I set up a user acquisition install campaign on Facebook without retargeting, without letting it run long enough. Now, what I should have done is 
many months earlier, started an awareness campaign that simply went for reach. Reach is a goal in Facebook um, that you can set up in a campaign type. It's uh, formatted so that you can get the most people actually looking at your ads. It's not formatted so that people will download your ad. Um, and I've got a picture of the funnel next, which I'll go into in a second. But before I do that, um, I, I will say the other things. So uh, the timing for test campaigns were too short um, to then apply and scale for a budget audience. I only had one month. I was doing the best that I could, but essentially my experiments were not running long enough for them to have a significant, um, you know, they, they weren't significant enough for me to be able to use that data in, effect, in an effective way. Um, so if you're going to do this yourself, I would give yourself at least three months to run those experiments. Run them concurrently as long as you don't have audience overlap because then you're going to bid against yourself. Um, but then that, that will give you a better idea of, uh, and a better estimate um, of how to actually run when it comes time to do your install campaigns. Um, and yeah, I tried to target too tightly. I, I ran auto opt I should have run auto optimization to get the best out of what Facebook can offer me. It's an extremely um, you know, powerful tool. And instead I was like, no, I know better. I know my users. I'm gonna like make these audiences and like I've been in marketing for like seven years, so I think I know what I'm doing, guys. But no, I didn't. So uh, don't make that mistake. Um, and then I didn't have enough creative executions. I really didn't have enough ad types. Um, not enough variables and I hadn't tested them enough. Um, I didn't have them in the correct formats. I didn't have the square, I didn't have the um, nine by 16 vital. I only had 16 by nine and that was a big problem when it came to how people were actually viewing my ads. They would just scroll right past them. They didn't take up enough real estate. They weren't, um, you know, schmick like they should have been. And additionally, Facebook costs generally have just gone up dramatically. Maybe it's actually not the holy grail, the platform that everybody thinks that it is. Okay. So here's the funnel I was talking about before. Um, if you have budget, I recommend you do this. You run an awareness campaign for a couple of months, um, and that's a traffic or a reach campaign on Facebook. Then you do a consideration campaign, which has more of a call to action, like, hey, you've seen my game, I've just told you about it, I haven't asked you for anything yet, and now in the second round of ads, I'm retargeting the same audience that's already seen my ads. Maybe I'm retargeting by video watches or something like that. And this time I'm saying, hey, consider downloading the game, but it's still not an in-store campaign, it's just a reach campaign. And then the third phase that I'd recommend is purchase. So purchase would be running your install campaigns, retargeting, retargeting those top two layers, because those top two layers have now seen your ads and been exposed to your product multiple times, and they're probably a little bit more trusting of what you're doing now. Um, so you will have better results if you can do this. However, I cannot do this because I don't have that budget, okay? <laughs> I just didn't have the budget. So, and I needed a thousand people in the game in one day. So that's a bit of a dilemma, isn't it? Because I'm not actually following the best practice for Facebook, but I still need a thousand users in my game today. Um, st additionally, I changed too many variables at once. So as I mentioned, it reduced the length of the campaign to one day from a week, um, and therefore it had no chance to optimize. I increased the budget and therefore had volume and reach issues. And yes, as I mentioned, didn't have the correct formats did the wrong targeting. Right, so the main problem here is that I was bursting. You guys have probably heard about burst campaigns if you're on free to play. Um, they used to be kind of like the thing to do to get users in the game. Um, unfortunately, they still might be nece necessary for soft launch and sometimes you just have to realize that data is more important than money. So you might just have to spend a little bit more or a lot more if you're gonna burst and try and get um, those thousand users in if that's what you really need. And here on the side, I have an email from my lovely friend at Google who was telling me that essentially do not do this, it is not what we recommend. Um, but um, I did it anyway. Again, so this is a um, picture of what to expect if you run your campaign properly. So this uh, red line represents your cost per install, your CPIs over time. It's a 28 day cycle. And as you can see, it fluctuates up and down for the first 14 days and then starts to level out. And this is really the period of time where you can start predicting with a little bit more accuracy what your CPIs are gonna be, what your cost or what your results are gonna be like. Um, yes, yeah, so. I was in the start of this part, so I think one day you can see it goes woom right up to the top, um, and yeah, that was that was what my graph looked like. So, go me. Okay, so I may not have the results I wanted, but you know, life has to go on, and the game's still in soft launch. We still need that data. So, how am I going to get it? I've made some mistakes, but I have a lot more skill and information now. So, let's try that again. Enter AdWords. You know, I was thinking at this time, fuck Facebook. Like, oh. 
you know, I don't know, maybe it's not that great, maybe it's not that great, maybe I should just delete my own account. Anyway, I was real angry at it. So I decided I would try another platform. I updated my creatives with the lessons that I had very harshly learned from my previous campaign. I made sure I had the correct formats. I updated my copy um, and I decided also not to freak out and turn it off straight away if things weren't the way I expected, okay? AdWords is great because it optimizes targeting for you. Uh, they changed the way that they do their um, user acquisition campaigns at the start of the year. They went from being a lot more detailed, targeted and separated to being a universal app campaign which basically does everything for you. It'll even make a video for you if you don't have one. I don't know how they do that but that's great, thank you. Um, it runs on YouTube, Play Store, Search and their display network without you having to do anything and it automatically finds the best combination of assets. So instead of like you setting up individual ads in Facebook, you just write these four lines here. You can see um, Play Critter Clash Free, Treetop Battle Game, etc. And then you upload your assets via YouTube and it will mix and match those and find the best optimised delivery of a combination of those. Like, thank you, thank you. You're doing my work for me. Thank you, thank you, AdWords. Um, so yes, anyway, here we go. So... <laughs> Round two, ready to try again, very scared. I think I deserve a break, to be honest. I am really tired by this point. I've been making the ads myself, I've been doing the budget, and I think I deserve a break, so I go to sleep. When I wake up in the morning, $1.14 per install, frick yes. I am so excited about this, considering my last one was $14. Thank you, thank you Edwards. Um, so this was a much better delivering campaign. Um, the AU benchmark for strategy, as you can see below, is uh, $1.53 and action is $1.08. So I'm sitting right in the middle, that's fantastic. I'm really, really happy with that. And additionally, you can see that YouTube was our best performer in terms of getting installs. Sydney loves our game the most, so maybe I can use that in future marketing campaigns. And overall, I had really excellent results. The volume during burst campaigns was still impacted, so when I reduced the timeline, I found that I wasn't really getting enough reach still, even though the CPIs were really stable. Um, so in the future, I recommend that you, if you do need to do burst campaigns for whatever reason, that you use multiple platforms, um, which is what I'm doing now. I'm using Unity Ads, um, Facebook for experiments, for targeting, and also AdWords in addition to that. So my takeaways for this part of the talk is try, 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 and try again. Ads is just about testing and learning and doing that in a very strategic, optimized way. Um, Facebook is great for detailed targeting, but complicated to get right and generally had much higher CPIs. Another problem that I realised later is that our game was launched on Android and um, Facebook is great for iOS and AdWords also uses the Play Store as a place to advertise. So I got much better results because we were on Android and I used AdWords. Um, if you really need volume, like I said, spread your campaigns across a few different networks, um, Unity, AdWords, Facebook or another network. Um, and good creatives make all of the difference, really they do. So work on them the most if you can. Thank you. How am I going for time here? Cool. All right, so I'm gonna do some questions, but before I go into them, I actually, uh, earlier this month, asked Facebook and YouTube for their questions. Is anyone here from the IGDA groups or on Twitter? Does anyone follow me on Twitter? Hi, how are you going? Um, so if you submitted a question, it might be up here. So these are some of the questions. So this is the first one. I guess I'd like to know what seems to be the best result on average in terms of cost slash audience reached. Um, there is no good answer to this one, I'm so sorry. It just really depends on your campaigns. Um, what you wanna do is check against benchmarks for your, for your genre um, and see you know, what people are getting. And honestly, it's about optimizing for your specific creative. You keep optimizing, finding your audience and making your creators better for that audience, you will get better results. Um, does that mean you have to spend $100,000? No. But does that mean you can spend $10 and get the results you want? No, you can't. You really need to think about spending budget, at least initially, to try and figure out what works. And ultimately, you're gonna to have to sacrifice some of that money to learn. Um, if I was an Indian, I was gonna do this for a premium title, I would really be trying to get at least $2,000 to teach myself about advertising, test heaps of creatives and see what works, especially if I'm thinking about um, you know, Steam pages and driving, driving traffic for my premium games. Should I spend $200 on one stream of advertising or for another stream it will cost me $300 but instead I get two times the audience? Hmm. Okay, um, so I think what they're saying is should I spend $200 on one stream 
Or another stream, it will cost me $300, but I get more audience. Spend $300 and get more audience. Do that. That's good. Um, the best place to advertise for different platforms, e.g., where would the best place be to advertise for a new mobile game? I cannot recommend AdWords higher. Like, I think I just went through that. But um, yeah, seriously, AdWords is really great. You should give it a go. It's a bit complicated to set up. If you need any help from someone who's like totally not sponsored, you can ask me. I'll help you. I'll sit down and look at your AdWords uh, for you, um, or at least sort of point you in the right direction. So please come and ask me. Um, but yeah, I reckon um, Facebook is, is good, but it's going to take you a little bit longer to, to get used to. And AdWords does it for you, so do that. Um, what are the differences between advertising for free-to-play and premium and how much time, effort or spend is required to lead up to the release and post-release for free-to-play and premium? Essentially, the difference between free-to-play and premium advertising is that with free-to-play, you're trying to optimise for lifetime value over um, the cost per install. So essentially, you're trying to get a lower cost per install and a higher lifetime value. And that is a cyclical thing. You can do that again and again and again if you get that formula right, and you can just spend because you know what you're going to earn. With premium, it's more like a set budget. You won't have as clear KPIs, um, but you can still use it. It's just... Um, you're going to be more focused on things like how did how what, what was my click through rate and what was the engagement um, and did I see a sales spike when I ran that campaign and you'll need to use back end tools to do that. So that's um, that's what I think the main difference is. Um, premium information seems pretty scarce. Would be fantastic to have some included. I'm so sorry, whoever it was that asked me this. I'm so sorry I didn't get to do the premium side of things. Yes, it is actually very scarce, and that's because a lot of um, independent games don't have the budget to advertise. Um, and I don't think there's a lot of people out there that are going to give that information away for free because people can be pretty secretive about their advertising. But I don't agree with that. I think that's wrong. So share more information, everyone. We'll all get better together. Any and all advice for Facebook ads targeting or Steam during the first week of launch and for sales updates and other times would be great. Um, Facebook ads targeting. Don't do it. Let targeting do itself. Throw the idea of demographics out in your mind. Do not target based on that at first, okay? Because at first, Facebook is just trying to optimise for the people, whoever they are, that want to play your game. And then after that, you can dig into the demographics and say, OK, well, 89% of my users were men, or 89% you know, of my users were women, so maybe I might start making my creatives go more towards that audience. Um, First week of launch, right, again, I think you really need to do that funnel approach that I mentioned before, which is the awareness campaign. Hey, my game is coming out in a couple of months. My game is coming out in a month. My game is coming out in a week or whatever it is. And then retargeting those people if you get good reach. Um, retarget those people. Hey, my game's actually out now. Like, you can buy it. You can buy it. Here's a link. Here's a download code, whatever it is. Um, so that's how I'd recommend doing that. And I'd do it over a month at least. Same campaign. Um, yep, I've already covered that. I don't like it. Um, <laughs> what online advertising is relevant to what kind of products? Okay, Spotify, Snapchat, Instagram, YouTube, etc. I'd want to know what audiences are reached by what platforms. For example, if I'm targeting hardcore gamers, esports players, I would assume ads would work well on YouTube and Twitch, but maybe Snapchat's hugely popular. Now, this is just about experimentation. Um, it's really about defining your core audience, it's marketing, so make sure you've done that, and then figuring out are there traditional PR and marketing approaches, are there community things that I can do to get that audience? Um, and then when it comes to advertising, you, yeah, it's a bit hard because as things start to consolidate, like YouTube, you can't, you can't actually just advertise to YouTube um, alone. If you're doing an app campaign, for example, you need to do it across their whole network. I think there's other um, types of campaigns that you can run through AdWords, I'm not as familiar with them. Um, but yes, you're correct in assuming that different platforms do have different targeted demographics. One really easy way to find out um, where, like who is using those platforms is to ask for their ad, um, just email the company and ask for their ad, um, ad information, like you're gonna buy a, buy a sponsored ad or something, they'll usually tell you what those demographics are, and those companies want you to use their platform, so it's usually on their website as well. Um, if you've got an advertising budget as an indie, how do you get the most bang for your buck? Um, Run small experimental campaigns and then use the best creatives, improve them and run it again using the final approach as I mentioned. Cool. And that's my resources. So you can have a look at that. I'll put that online later. But before I close, does anyone have any questions they'd like to ask me before I go? Hey. Oh, yeah. 
like, is the funnel approach mainly just the lead out for launch, or if a game's already launched, would you still take that approach? Yes. Um, no, the funnel approach is, is great for, like, if you have a specific goal. So if, you, if your goal changes, then you might want to restart a funnel because you've got a new objective. Maybe you have a new audience. So it's, it's a good idea to, like, run that again. Yeah. yeah. Hi, Matt. Yeah, I mean, that's like, I spend more on the purchase phase because I need to, because I need users. And I have to spend more because I have to run burst campaigns. Um, but it really depends. Like, you'll probably end up spending less on your conversion campaigns because that'll be a smaller audience, if that makes sense. But it might be a better conversion rate. Yeah. Hi. A soft launch or advertising in general? Advertising in general, like I have a game that I want to release like a fair while from now. I don't want to start advertising so early that people have forgotten about it before I can yeah. actually finish it. What you should do is advertise something that allows you to capture their details, like an email address, so that you can actually like use that consistently and have a newsletter or something like that. Yeah. Um, depending on your budget, I mean you could you could run an advertising campaign, an awareness campaign for a long time, but I really wouldn't. Like, I would do it in stages. I'd be like, announcement of the game, um, game coming out in a couple of weeks, release. And I would do, like, two to three week campaigns, really hitting it hard at those key times and initially trying to, yeah, get that information so that you can use it for free marketing and PR. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Hi. Uh, if you had a budget of, say, $500 and you had to pick one platform and one ad type, which would you pick and why? What's the goal? Um, I'd uh, do a UAC campaign on AdWords. Yep. Cool. Yep. Anyone else? No. Yep. Hi. So last question. Um, what's uh, the tipping point where you say this isn't working? <laughs> so I know you said maybe spend about two, two grand, but is there like a number that you would say, okay, spend you know, $500 or $200 a month and it's not working for you, then go back to the drawing board? Um, assuming that you already know how to run ads and you're not learning, then um, if your ads are not performing after two weeks, I would be going back to the drawing board and saying, okay, what's well, the creative, creatives, it's the relevance, it's the audience, or why isn't this delivering, why it's not performing, and I'd, yeah, then, then I'd start again, I reckon, yeah. Was there one over here as well? Hi. Yes, sorry, I was just wondering if you're going to be uploading the slides. Yeah, I can. I'll put them on Twitter if you like. Um, I'll just go back. I've got my my Twitter here. So if you follow me on Twitter or if you'd like my email, does that show up? Oh, it's at Steggy underscore. The underscore is cut off there. Um, but yeah, if you tweet me, um, I will tweet out my slides for sure or you can email me. My email address is right there. Um, yeah. Thank you. Cool. Is that it, Ken? Uh, five five, we've got five more minutes. Does anyone need another question? Hey, June. How you going? Yeah. What determines like how much they're charging you for like different things? Like what's the actual underlying reason why some users cost more to get? Okay, essentially it's real time bidding. So you're bidding against other advertisers who want to access that same audience. Um, so it's just like if I'm willing to pay, you know, more than another advertiser, then I will probably serve that I I will get that ad served to that user. Um, and you can set bid caps and things like that in your campaigns. Initially, I wasn't doing that because I was just trying to find information. I was like, how much is it going to be? Um, you can set bid caps in all different types. Like every single platform that I use has a bid cap system. Um, and then once I had a better idea, I was able to set a bid cap and say, OK, I don't want to spend more than $4, actually. Um, and that works well if you've optimised your campaigns. And if you haven't optimised your campaigns, then they won't deliver. The other thing is um, don't bid against yourself. So if you run two campaigns at the same time to the same audience, you're essentially outbidding yourself, which drives the price up. So that's really be careful of that. You can check that in Facebook and audiences. You can check audience overlap. And that will show you like what the slice is that you're, you're bidding to. Hey. Last question? Yep. Yeah. users who pay less or fewer users who pay more? 
that really depends on what point of the soft launch we're in. So we go through uh, several stages in soft launch, like first time, user experience, monetization, lifetime value, tutorial. We test all of these things in sequence. Um, and it depends where in the game. Traffic quality becomes very important for monetization because you need users to stay in the game for longer to see whether they're purchasing, what they're purchasing, and then give you enough information to iterate on that. Um, so, and additionally, as I said in the start, we, we chose Australia because we know that Australia is really close affinity to our primary market that we'll eventually launch in. So we know the traffic quality here is really, really good. It does mean the price is a lot more expensive though. If you wanted to launch in the Philippines and get more volume, you would get CPIs much lower, like 50 cents or so. so. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, everyone.